Masechis Bov Metziah, Daf Lamedal of the Mudbeis. Okay, and you have the charts ready. The yeah. chart will also get you by email again. Yeah. I hope you printed them. Yeah, thank you. Omar Lamedal of the Mudbeis, Lamedal of the Omar Rav Huna. Omar Rav Huna. Line starts with Rav Huna, and that's about uh, above the you know. Halfway through the page. Omar Abuna, we are repeating something we said uh, on Thursday because that is the beginning of the new topic. Omar Abuna says, Abuna, Mashbin Oisoy, who's Oisoy? You make him swear. Who's him? That's the person who really is willing to pay you for the lost object. Let's say it's a Shoemer Sochor and it lost, he lost it, or Shoemer Chinam and he was Poshea, and he says, Yes, I'm paying you. I'm paying you outright. I don't have to take any shavuah that nothing happened. I admit I was wrong. I was wrong. Honey, I was wrong. These are the three best words for marriage. That's what I want. So in H. Yeah, I was wrong. Absolutely. So now this guy tells his friend I was wrong. And now get and I'll pay you. I'll pay you for the item, for the shmira that I lost you. That are that is my fault that I, that I got lost. Still must be no shavuah. You still have to take make him take shavuah. She ain't a shu so Make him swear that the item is not within his possession, that it's not in his house. Why? My timer. Why should we make you? Anyhow, he's paying. And he's an honest person, you know, because he's paying. Why do you have to make him take a shvua that the item is not in his possession? My item that I gave him, I'm the owner and he's a shomer. Very good. Chayshina, we are concerned. Very nice. Yitzchok. Shema en of Nosan Bo. We're concerned maybe he had his eyes on it, which means maybe... He is, in his own book, not lying. The item, I gave him candlesticks to look after when I went to Chotzaret. The candlesticks may be in his drawer. <laughs> and he is buying them off me illegally. He's paying me, telling me a lie, a fib, a lie that really this item is lost. It didn't get lost. It's in his house. That's how you have to take Shvua. So every person, even if he's a paying Shomer Socha or paying Shomer Chinam, still take, make sure that it's not in his uh, uh, possession it's out in his house, in his domain, because maybe he wants to take it illegally, and he's a chamsan. He's basically forcing me to sell him something which I don't want to sell him. Maybe. Now we're going to ask, uh, it's a rather long question. Uh, you have your charts, everybody? Yes. Chart attack? Ellen, you have one? If not, no, can no. somebody give Ellen a chart? Oh, from over there, Yitzhak? Do you mind? Yeah? Oh, that's very nice of you guys. Thank you. So now, um, so now what? Now we say... Now, 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 now. Now we're going to have a brysa. The brysa is not really as difficult as it may seem. And that, it's not a brysa, by the way. It's a mishnah at the end of, uh, of Shavuos. And the mishnah tells us as, far, before the mishnah, before the mishnah, to make it much, much, much simpler, we have to have two small introductions. Introduction number one. The story of the brysa is of two people. One of them is the lender. One of them is the borrower. The lender is the Malve, the borrower is the Loive. Very nice. Now, the Loive gave a collateral, a collateral, a mash coin, yeah, to the hands of the Malve, of the lender. The lender is the one keeping the collateral. In case you don't pay, I'll keep it. Ha, ha, ha. That's my security. Now, let's say that the item was worth a Sela. Sela is worth two shekels. It's much, much more than today's shekel. And each shekel is worth two dinars, dinars. And therefore, one sela is worth four dinarim, four dinarim, okay? So let's say, before we get into all the trouble of the Mishnah, let's say everything was on Kidori. Let's say that I borrowed from my friend, no, no, let's say I lent my friend a sela, four dinarim, four dinarim I lent him, and he gave me a collateral, which we all agree, we all love it, we all agree that the collateral is worth how much? Four dinarim. And let's say I, I'm two things now, two hats, woohoo. I'm both what? I'm a Malve, and I'm also looking after his item. What did he give me that's worth four dinarim? What do you want? Candlesticks. I lent him money. I have your candlesticks that are worth four dinarim, and if you don't pay me that, then what? Then I will keep it for myself. I am a Shomer Sachor. According to some opinions, which we follow here, I'm like a Shomer Sachor. Why? I'm keeping that those candlesticks, not because I'm nice to you, because I'm gaining something out of it. What am I gaining? It starts with an S and finishes with a Y, security. I have security that if you don't pay on time, I'll keep those candlesticks. 
Now, what happened if I lost those candlesticks and they're worth four shekels? Nothing. Then what? <laughs> he doesn't have to pay me. I was inadvertently paid and I lost the payment and that's my fault. Right? Let's say the, Baal, the, the, the Malve is a person who is what? He's a person who lent the money. Very nice. So he's also a Shomer Sochor. And since he's also a Shomer Sochor, he lost. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're Shomer Sochor. So what if I lost? I lost, right? Is a Shomer Sochor. But I don't have to pay you. I paid you by not charging the loan. The loan is paid. Very simple. That's a simple case. Yeah. I lent you four dinarim. Now that I got your candlesticks and I lost them, I was paid. Now I lost them. <laughs> that's my fault. Uh, maybe one day I'll find them and then I'll use them. And that's it. And the loan is over and everyone would be friends. That would be if we all agree on numbers. Unfortunately, in four cases, these are really, if you can see in the chart, you see the A and the B, it's on purpose. Yeah. In other words, there are two cases where the borrower is, is claiming and two cases where the lender, when, excuse me, uh, no, the, the, the lenders, and in two cases, the borrower is claiming. And in all these four cases, the disagreements regarding the value of the mashkon, they argue about the value of the collateral, and that creates all kinds of weird and interesting facts. Let's see. Says the Heilige Heilige Mishnah, a person lent his, his friend money, over a mashkon, he gave the lender, ma mashkon is a collateral. The, Iba, the over the mashkon, the mashkon got lost. Oy, oy, oy. What happened when the mashkon got lost? Two things happened. A shomer sachor, which is the which is the holder of the mashkon, the malva, he lost it. But so what? Nothing really happened because all we do is what we call in Hebrew, late kazes. We're evened out, right? We evened out. I lent you a month ago money. I'm just not taking the money back. You don't bother me about the money. I don't bother you about the mashkon and shalom al Israel. However, uh oh, here we're starting to have disagreements regarding the value of the mashkon. The Omar Loy, who told you we are now in case A1. If your eyes want to jot between the Gemara and the Charty Tarty. The Omar Loy. Now the Omar Loy says the lender to the borrower, Selah Levisicha Olov. The halva was Sela. Let's just move everything to dinorim. My life will be so simple. Sela, I lent you four dinorim. Shekel ho yoshove. But the mashkin you gave me, which I got lost, was only worth shekel, which is two dinorim. Right? Even I know that four minus two equals two. Which means he says you still owe me two dinorim. That's the claim. You see in, in the A1, as, as the further you go, two dinorim you still owe me. It's true the two dinorim I was paid inadvertently by getting them and losing them. But because the mashkun was only worth half the loan, you still owe me the other half of the loan. So give me two dinarim now. Now, case number one, we're now in A1. A1 says the loive, says the borrower, loy, that's not true. No, you lent me four, and the collateral is worth four. Four, four minus four is, that's really hard. How much is four minus four? I have to think about it. I think it's zero. In other words, he basically says, I owe you zero. A1, the person says, I owe you nothing. I owe you nothing. Then he's called what? Koifer Bakol. He's completely denying any chiyuv whatsoever. Potter, <laughs> Midoraisa at least, is Potter from paying and is Potter from Shvua. He does not have to take any oath. He doesn't have to take any Shvua because he is Potu. Because a person who says, I don't owe you anything, then his potter, we're not going now into details of why, what, how, but basically, I don't even think we need, we're not going to use the, the thing today. That's case number one. Now, sell, case number two, if it's really important and urgent. No, 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 no. Good point. No, no, no. I'm the lawyer. I know how much it's worth. He was worth four, just like the loan, always. And therefore, you nothing. Nothing changed. That's the real value of the. No, the Malva says, I know it's worth uh, less. <laughs> the Malva says, I know how much it's worth. I know how much it's worth. It was in my house. Yeah, it's true that it's your item, but it was in my house for the past month. I know how much it's worth. So what? I know that I wasn't paid in full. I lent you four, and I know that the collateral I got was worth two. I was okay with it till now, but you still owe me more money. Why not? The collateral doesn't have to be cash off a mice. He's a person who, who I trusted you. I lent you four. Now you gave me an item of two. You still owe me two. Why? Because maybe you should have been more careful. Because, because, because. Uh, yeah. 
no, 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 no. We they never they never spoke about the value. Again, you guys always say these kind of things of why they wouldn't, they didn't. I mean, yes, they didn't. And Hanami, you want to be more meduyak, more precise. Then Enochinami, he should have evaluated at the beginning. They didn't. Uh, tough luck. Now we're in stock, as it happens many times. Okay. Case number A2. A2 now. A2 is the star of the show. A2 is simple, but that's going to be the basis for the whole sugya. So have your have your um, thinking caps on now in A2. Case number two. Selil Visicha Olov, Shekel Oyoshove. Same claim exactly. I lent you four dinarim. It was only worth two. Why? Because it was worth two. So you still owe me two. It's true that I lost it and I got it slash lost it. Still owe me two. Valo Oimer, the borrower is now defending himself. A2. What is the defense line of the borrower? He says, Lo, Ike, that's not true. It's true that it was worth four dinarim, but Shloshi dinarim Oyoshove. He wasn't worth that little, only two. He was worth three, which means what? You claim that I owe you two. Really, I partially admit that I owe you one, right? Then Chayev. What is the Chayev? You can see in the halachos and the reasons. Why? Is Chayev now to take a Shvua. One, se- one dinar, of course, he has to pay, he admits. The other dinar, you have to take an oath, take a Shvua, who's you? The lawyer. He's the one attacked. He's the one being accused. You have to take Shvua that really you know for sure under Shvua that the item was worth three and not two, and therefore you only owe him one and not two. That's it. So now it's Chayv Shvua. That would be the simple case, because you should know, in Halacha, who takes Shvua usually in Halacha? The one who claims, the plaintiff, or the one accused? Accused. Accused. Either you pay or you take Shvua, one of the two. Very nice. So these are the two cases of A, of the Reisha. In simpler Hebrew, it's not called A, it's called Reisha in Aramaic. Now we are having two, don't get confused here. Now we have two alternative different cases. Turning the tables, rupa, turn the tables, you who. Now we're talking about the loive claiming from the malve. Ah, yes, yes. Now the borrower is claiming more money from the lender. How come? Listen to this. Sele hil visani olov. You lent me sele, which is how much in dinorim? That's four dinorim. Shnaim hoyoshove, same claim exactly. And he says, Shnaim hoyoshove, eight. No, two, no. Two sloim are eight dinarim. Yeah, you don't need all the time to chart, right? In other words, in simple English, you really lent me four, but my collateral is worth twice as much. I overpaid you, mister. You're overpaid. Now, if you can say, oh, you can, I'm a Shamer Sachar. Fine. You're a Shamer Sachar. Great. A Shamer Sachar lost has to pay. So whichever hat you're wearing, mister, you owe me four dinarim. You lent me four. And right now, it's lost in your, I don't know where, in your kid's uh, doll's house. I don't know where it is. You have eight, so you still owe me four. Give me the change, so to speak, of four. I overpaid you four, as Shomer Sochor, or whatever you call it. Vahalo Oimer, comes Mr. Malve, who is the Picodon, who is a collateral holder. And he says, No, I lent you four, and it was worth four. Four minus four is more or less zero, something like that. Yeah. In other words, I owe you nothing. Potu, that's case B1. Yeah, if you want to get the chart here, B1, I owe you nothing. I'm sorry, you have no idea what you're talking about. And therefore, it's a koifel, but koil is a, shall I say in English, complete denier. And therefore, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. And therefore, he doesn't have to take any shvu or anything. We're not going out to the Rabbanon. Midorai said that's the story here. Now, Selel Visoni Olov, last but not least. So here is another claim of who? Of the borrower, borrower the loyve. Comes the loyve and says, Selel Visani Olov, you lent me how much is Sela in Dinorim? Anybody, please? Four. Terrific. Shnaim Yoshove. And really, the collateral is worth eight. Two, which is really what? Two times four is more or less, I think, eight. In other words, I overpaid you. You, Mr. Lender, owe me now a change of four. You owe me four. That's the same line of defense, or the same attack as before. Now, the line of defense of the Malve now is different. That's not true. It's true that I lent you four dinorim, but the collateral was a little bit more than the halva, which means I don't owe you four more, I owe you one more, because four plus one is five, you know that? And therefore, the halva was four, 
the collateral was five. So it's true that I was overpaid one dinner, but don't get carried away. Don't talk to me about four dinarim, okay, mister? So they're arguing about three dinarim, but there is a partial, partial agreement here. He's called in nice French, Moide Bemiktas. He's Moide Bemiktas, Chayev. He has to now take a Shavua and really take an oath. Of course, he has to pay the one dinner that he, that he admits he owes. That goes without saying. And regarding the other three, take a Shavua. You really are so sure that the collateral is worth only how much? Five. Then you have to take a Shavua is worth five. Ad Khan, it's all really very, it's quite simple. Lamaisa, this Brysa, with all the different numbers and stories, we have, excuse me, please, we have two cases of Koifer Bakol on each side. We have two cases of a person who denies completely Somidorais is not Chav Shvua. I'm not talking now about Shvua Seses. It's not the issue. And we also have two other cases, which is A2 and B2, in which the person, either the Loiva or the Malva, gives a partial agreement, Moide Vemiktas, and therefore it's Chav Shvua. And if the Mishnah would have finished here, I would have said, nice, let's go home and drink coffee. But that is not the story. The Mishnah has something else to say. If you have a very quick and to the point question, not an if would question. Yeah. The, the, uh, Which borrows claim? A2? Yeah, I, uh, B1, B2, borrows claim. Yeah. X amount. Yeah. Uh, do they get an independent uh, valuation on it? Or does, or they don't know how much it's value. They don't know. It's lost. Exactly. They can't evaluate it because it's lost according to the... According to the but one common denominator, by the way, and I'm, I'm, I'm answering you, the one holding the picodon, and we assume that he's saying the truth that he lost it, is who? Is always the lender. The lender is the one who holds it and we assume it's really lost somewhere, right? And the one who's not holding it now, but on the other hand, was the owner of the collateral, yeah, of Let's of the Candlesticks, is the borrower. That's for sure. There is no way to evaluate now. It's lost. So you can't bring a, a professional assessor. That's it. So you all have to rely on their shvuas, on their honesty, that they're not going to be nishpa on the shekel. Now, okay, so usually we say, who's the person who's nishpa? The Shavuah always has to be Me'ikar Din Midoraisa. Shavuah, by definition, except for a few exceptions, one of them is near, is the person who makes the claim, the person who's blamed, accused, attacked, yeah? You owe me so-and-so, and he's fidgeting and saying, yes, no, maybe so, part, ta, then he has to take a Shavuah. That's always the case. Comes the Bryce, excuse me, it's the Mishnah. The Mishnah adds uh, a star line here, a byline. Me Nishba, you know who is the one who has, who has to take the Shavuah? We make a special takona here, a special uh, uh, establishment here. You know who's the one who has to take the shvua? You know who's that? That Misha Pikodon Etzloi. The one holding the Pikodon, who's that? The Malve, the lender, who's holding those candlesticks somewhere in his house, or maybe he claims he lost them, he's the one who has to take the shvua. Why? Shema Yishovaze. We're concerned like that. Maybe the person who's the loive not holding the Pekodon will take a Shvua. The Yoitz Yaloi Sa Pekodon. Ay, 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 ay. Look at that. Imagine yourself. These are the candlesticks, the prize candlesticks. They're arguing whether it's three dinorim or four dinorim. Let's say you are the Loive. You're going to take an oath. Let's say that it's three dinorim or five dinar or, or four dinorim. You're going to take the Shvua. And you know what the Mav is going to do? The Mav who claimed that he lost it is going to pull them out. Ah! He's going to pull them out, out of his jacket or out of the back room and say, look, everybody can see that they're worth more or less, they're worth like I said. And then the other guy will come up with egg on his face. So what? And since it took Shvua, you machti him to be nishba l'sheker. We want to avoid people from being possible. Rashi says, we don't want Bnei Israel to be nishba l'sheker and be possible edus v'l'shvua. They'll, they'll be disqualified from being edim, from being dayonim. We don't want to create that. And therefore, what do we do? A special takona that the person who's nishba should not be the person who doesn't have the pikodon, because maybe the person with the pikodon will pull it, rub it out of the hat, out of the sleeve. Pa, pa, pa. And therefore, what? And therefore, you will come like a straight liar straight away. Question of the Rishonim ask is, let him be a liar. <laughs> if he's a real liar, nishba l'sheker, let him eat the porridge that he cooked. Well, why are we so concerned about a liar? There are many different answers. One answer is by the, I think, from Banu Rash, by thought on Thursday, they say that maybe the person is mistaken. Usually, when we don't know the truth for sure, we assume the person making shvua is, is a mistake. Like you said a few days ago, you're right. Once a person is nishba and he's, of course, he doesn't have bad record, we assume he's right. This person may be just mistaken. In other words, he's just, you know, he's so sure of himself and he's nishba, 
and he's making an honest mistake, and now you right away prove him wrong, they will make him worse than he really is. That's that's one spore. So now, okay, so we make a takona that the person that has to be nishba is the one holding the pikodon, because he will never speak against himself, the mashkoin, and not the person who is the other side who's not holding it. Yeah, because maybe shvu on one side, and then, hey, hey, I pulled out out of the out of the head this, will make him be a liar. So the one who's holding it, who claims, by the way, that he lost it, he's the one who has to take the shvuah of how much it's worth. Now, Frek de Gemara, Ahaya, wait a second. As you guys always tell, where do you pin? You know, that statement at the end of the Mishnah, which one of the four cases here do you pin this halacha to? Ilay Maseifa, if you want to connect it and pin it to the last two cases, that's not a chiddush. Of course, in the last two cases, B1 and B2, obviously, <laughs> without any special takana, of course, the person who has to take the shvua is who? The one being what? The one being blamed is the malve who holds the pikodon. He's the one being accused. He's the one that has onus of the shvua. The case of B2, the last case, who is the one who has to take a shvua? Look at the halacha of B2. Let's look together in the chart. B2 halacha. Yeah, B2 halacha over here. Yeah, B2 halacha. Who has to take shvua? Of course, the lender. Yeah, the lender must pay and swear. Pay what he knows, what he claims is, is right. And he has to take a shvua. Well, of course, he's the one being accused. He's the one being attacked. And he has to take a shvua. I don't need the Mishnah to tell me that. Elamai, a seifa de reisha. Wow. The chiddish is on A2. A2. That's a Chiddush, that big square there in the middle, the biggest square in the chart, that is where the Chiddush comes. Sela il b'sicha olov, comes the Malve, who's holding the mash coin and claims that he lost it, and he says, I lent you how much? Four dinorim, I translate everything to dinorim. Shekel o yoshove, and it was only worth two, you still owe me two, says the lender to the borrower, you owe me another two. The hello oimer, who is hello? The borrower says, no, not true. True that the halva was four dinarim, but shloshu dinarim no yashobe. It was not worth two, it was worth three, which means you claim I owe you two. I'm still, how do you say, stand, outstanding amount of how much of two? Amount standing is two, it's really one. Exactly. You say two, I say one. It's my mix is chayev, the shvua gabe loivehu. The really the one that should have done the shvua is the loive. The one being accused, the one being blamed, so to speak, is the loyve. So Me'ikir Adin, what we always learned our entire lives, the one who is claimed that he has to pay and he starts saying, yes, no, half, half, he's the one who has to take Shavua. And here comes the Chiddush. On that, we pin the Chiddush of the Mishnah on A2. A2, that's the name of the game. And on that, we're going to harp and concentrate from now for a good few minutes. The Amur Abbanon. Come, came Rabbanon and said, Anu Chiddush. Rabbanon turned the tables and he made a tremendous Chiddush over here. Lishtaba Malve, let the Malve, although he's not the one with the onus of Shvua, he has to take Shvua that it's worth how much? That the Mashkor was only worth two and not three. Shem Yishovaze, because otherwise we're concerned if you want to keep the Shvua by the Loive as it should have been for the borrower. Maybe you be a We're concerned that Mr. Malve will play dirty trick over here. He really maybe will find it. Maybe he's lying about losing it. I don't know the story, but maybe he's the one who may have it. He'll quickly find it in his house. Not just find it. Maybe he lied straight away. Maybe Mamish lied and he didn't lose it. He had some interest in it because he's playing games and he's going to come out and pull out the picado and whoop, here it is. Ha ha. And therefore, the other one will come out a liar. So we change and we say, really, the one that has to take Shavua is the one who is the Malve. The Malve himself, who is the one accusing the plaintiff, the Tevea, is the one who, uncharacteristically, has to take the Shavua. How much does he have to be Nishba? What he says, but it's two. Take the Shavua and then take the money from the extra dinar from your friend, the Loiva. Not such a good friend anymore. That's up until now what is the Mishnah with the Pshat of the Mishnah. That's it. No, in this case, the Malve is the one, yes, taking Shavua. The Malve is the one who's taking, what do you mean not trusted? Why do you think the Malve is not trusted? 
No, 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 no. We are concerned maybe if the lawyer would take shvua as he should, yeah, maybe the lawyer will take shvua, maybe innocently, really believing that it's worth three dinarim. And then the malve that may, yes, have the thing under his uh, coat over there, pull it out and say, hey, 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 it's really worth two. Everybody can see that's worth all the assessors and now the evaluators come. They all say it's worth two. So now if he took shvua, the lawyer, he may come out to be a liar by shvua, and it will be possible, could be because of a sad mistake, miskin, it will be possible forever from being an aid or a dayan. No, what will do the next chasana? will be the aid. And therefore, we say, we do, Dafka, yes, tell the Malve to take the Shvua. We say, Mr. Malve, we change the tables, we return the tables, we tell the Malve to take Shvua, although he's the one blaming, and usually he's not the one who's taking Shvua, here he should. Because we say, if you have the mashkin in your hand, you have like a ticking bomb, you have an atom bomb in your hand saying that you can always make the other one look like a liar, and therefore we say, you take the Shvua. You'll never talk against himself. And Shvua's will believe, will believe Shvua's. We, we don't assume people lie with Shavuot. That's up, that's up in the Mishnah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Good. Fine. What does it have to do? Now, if you remember, don't, 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 don't lose sight. Keep your eyes on the ball. As we say in Hebrew, don't lose the north, we say. In other words, what was the statement before we read this weird and wonderful Mishnah? Ravuna. What did Ravuna say? That every person is a shomer and pays, has to swear that the item is not with his possession. I don't know if you noticed, <laughs> but this guy, the Malvi, who holds the Picodoin, we said he's a Shomer Sochor, right? Who claims that he lost the item, right? And he's paying, one second, oh, you're getting it. And he's paying, how's he paying? <laughs> the money's already by the loyve. Freg de Gemara, I think Ellen already gets the question. Freg de Gemara attacking Ravuna now. Next, today, we're now starting today's page. The Im Isa de Ravuna if Ravuna's statement is right, the what? That Mr. Ma in this case, Mr. Malve holding the Picodon is a Malve Shomer Socher, Mashkan holder. He has to take Shvua. Okay, but let's continue. Came in the Mishtam Malve She'en Abir Shusoi. If the Malve already took Shvua, that the collateral is not in his house. If so, Hechimatsi Mapiklo. How are we concerned he'll take it out? We assume Shvuas are true. We don't assume people swear in based in. How could that be true, Ravuna? There's a mission against you. You're concerned that a person holding a mash coin who happens to be a pain shamer sacher will pull it out. Wee -hoo! No, what mean he who he who? You're not in a courtroom <laughs> courtroom drama over here. He was nished already that it's not with him. So how can he take it out? Even if he's a liar, you can't be nished by sheker and a second later <laughs> take it out in based in. Yeah, there's a limit, yeah? So it's a question. There's a question on Ravuna. Now we're going to see three different answers. Answer number one, Everything easy and nice. Omar Rove, or Rabbi, Omar Rove, Omar Rove Yosef, with your permission, both of them. Sheyesh Edim Shenisrefo. We're really not relying on his statement. There are Edim, there are witnesses that say that the item, that those candlesticks, that, that item was burnt. It's burnt to ashes. And we don't just believe him, but his own word. We know from two Adim, and two Adim we assume never lie, once they're really tried and tested, and we know that the item was burnt. What? Are you happy? Frag the Gemara, Ihochi, if you know that the item was burnt, Mechim Aisilo, <laughs> then what are you concerned about? You said you're concerned the Loive shouldn't take a Shvua, because maybe the Malve will pull it out. But if there are Adim that it was burnt, where will pull it out from? <laughs> it's burnt. We're in a real, real uh, conundrum here, rather than catch 22. On one hand, we're concerned he'll take it out. On the other hand, we say that we know he doesn't have it. How could that be? <laughs> How could be such a situation? Elamar of Yosef. Therefore, of Yosef changes gears a little bit. There are Edim. There are witnesses. We don't rely his own words. We know there are Edim, two Edim, objective people, big tzaddikim, tried and tested, inter interrogated, and they know that it got stolen. So what if it got stolen? So now we say like this, because it got stolen, there's a chashash that maybe eventually the malve will pull it out. What do you mean? Soif, soif, at the end of the day, where will the malve bring it up from? Again, let's not lose sight. What are we saying here? The loive is the one, who, the malve is the one who takes shvua, because if the loive takes shvua, maybe the malve, after we know that it was stolen from his house, right? Maybe the Malve will, yes, pull it out 
and bring the candlesticks to base in and show that this guy who swore Shriot is a liar, egg on his face. But where will it bring it from? It got stolen. Right now it's in the mafia's dark den in the dungeon. Where is it, Bechalal? Says the Gemara, the Torah Humaisilo. No, maybe the Malve will really, really interrogate, will really, really look into the case of who stole it. And by the way, Gnevis, in the times of the Gemara, I don't know about today, I think today too, many of the thefts are what we call in English inside job. He knows where the people come to the house. Maybe it's his child's private tutor. Maybe it's a cleaner. Maybe it's a gardener. The butler did it. The butler did it. In other words, the Malve would really start looking and searching and playing detective until he finds the item. Until he finds the item that was really stolen. It's not a liar. The Adim that it was stolen. And then he'll pull it out in Beisdin and draw it out and show that the other one is a liar. That's why it's better that he'll take the Shavua and he'll never talk against himself. Frag the Gemara, wait a second. Okay, that's nice. That makes sense. Of course, people may find thieves. They may locate the thief. But if so, Ihochi, if so, why did you turn the tables at all? Kimishtaba Malve, let's say the Malve is the one who's taking Shvua. You're making a whole special, tremendous change. You're switching sides here from Loive to Malve. What did you help exactly? Kimishtaba Malve, if the Malve is the one taking Shvua, which is a whole new establishment here, Nami, same problem now exists. Why aren't we concerned that the one who's going to play Sherlock Holmes is going to be who? The Loive. Maybe the Loive will find the, the, the thief. Maybe the Loive will contact the police and private detectives. Maybe the Loive will be the one who's doing it. So now the Loive will make the Malve look like a liar. If it's in the hands of the Ganev and somebody is playing detective, then why is one better than the other? You're making this whole change. What did you gain? The Malve is the one against the regular rule. The Malve is the one taking Shvua. Great. The Loive will really, the all are heated up against each other. The Loive will play detective. The Loive will find the thief. And the Loive will show in Beisdin in a week's time, in two weeks' time, after finding the, the, the Gneva. <laughs> he was wrong. He says it was worth two. Really, it's worth three. And says the Gemara, no, there's a big difference. As I told you before, the assumption of the Gemara is that most thefts are inside jobs. They say that's true about big corporations, I think, right? Usually there's corruption, you know, it's inside, it's from inside the, the company. And therefore, the Gemara answers as follows. Pishlama Malve, the Malve, Yoda, Man Ka'il Benofak Bebeise. The Malve knows who's coming in and out of his house. The Malve knows who are the gardener, who's the butler, who's the nanny, and who's the private tutor, and who's the dude. He knows who they are. The Ozil Vator Humaisilo, he'll do his detective work, he'll be Torah and bring it to Beisdin. It's much more likely that the Malve, who's from his house, he was stolen may find it, the, 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 the Ghana will bring the, the, the goods to Beisdin to prove the other side wrong and make the other one be Nishbal Shekel Posul, dead. Ela loive miyodam an ayl benafik bebeisei de malve. But the loive, the borrower, who does not live with the malve, so the loive, how does he know who comes in and out, who are the ones coming in and out of the house of the malve? Normally, they don't live together. There are different houses, different lifestyles, different stories. And therefore, the loyve doesn't know who exactly goes into the Malve's house. Yes, of course, he could do extra work, but it's much less of a chashash, much less of a concern, because the concern is that the Malve will find out who the Ganev is. Mimele will say, let's turn the tables and make the Malve be Nishba, because then the Malve will, yeah, we're not concerned that the Malve will pull out the mashkun. He was Nishba and finished. If the loyve was Nishba, the Malve will find the Ganev and prove the Loiva wrong and disqualify him, passing him from being an aide and a dine for life. Yeah, he's like maiming him for life. That's answer number one of Rove or Rove B'Shem Rav Yosef, or Rabba B'Shem Rav Yosef. Answer number two. And that's what I told you before already. <laughs> I hinted to that too early, to the second answer. Abai Oime, a very simple answer. Zera, we, do, we are concerned that what? Let's not, what are we talking about, about over here? We are concerned, like Rav Huna, that the person should always take a shvua. Who's the person holding the mashkon? That really, that he should take a shvua. If he took a shvua, how can he later pull it out in base? Din says the Gemara. Some people always have excuses. Zera shema yiton The Malve, who is the shomer socher here, who's holding the candlestick, who's holding the, the mashkon, he will claim and say, "Lo, you'll tell him ach shvua mitzasiya." I swore. When I swore it wasn't in my house, it really, really wasn't in my house. But you know, two days later, I found it. 
What did I swear? I didn't swear that I'm a good American. What did I swear? I swore that I didn't find it. True. When I told you on Sunday in Beis and I didn't find it, I really didn't find it. Honest to God. Elamai, now it's Tuesday. I found it. We made the, uh, you know, Pesach cleaning and I found it. And therefore, the two can live together. <laughs> Rav Huna is right. He's making a Shavuah. Every person has a standard Shavuah to take that even though I pay, I still have to take Shavuah that it's not in my house. And so it was. No, I found it, mister. And maybe he's even right, by the way. And now it looked really, really hard because I saw you playing uh, dirty games with me, saying it was worth three or not two. Now we found it. And look, it's worth two. And you are apostle. You're disqualified for life from being an aide and a dying. And therefore, we don't want to do that. So we place the Shavua on the Malve, not the Loi, but we turn the tables to the Malve. Answer number three. Number three. <clears throat> answer number three. Ravashi Oma. Ravashi answers. Yeah. Ravashi Oma. Ravashi says a genius answer. Instead of saying this or that, both, both are right. Ravashi Oma. Zen Ishba Vezen Ishba. Both the Malve and the Loi, they're both Nishba. They're both Nishba. Each one is Nishba, his own Shavua. Meaning, Zen Nishba Sheinu Bershus. The Malve, who is a Shoemer Sochor, who claims that he lost it, right? And he's paying by, by keeping the loan in the hands of the, the money in the hands of the lawyer. That guy swears exactly like Ravuna said. <clears throat> his nishba, that it's not in his possession. Because maybe he's lying, maybe this and that. And the Zen nishba, Kama Yoshave. And on the other hand, the loive, Rabashi says, we don't turn the tables. No, no, no. The loive is the one who has to swear how much he was. Like a regular, good, old mechanics of halacha, the dynamics are, are normal. Nishba Kama Yoshave, you know who has to take the regular shvo of how much it's worth. The loive. If so, what's the Kiddush? What's the Kiddush? Thank you. Of course, the loive is the one being blamed. Of course, he's the one who has to take the shvo. Then what's the Kiddush? What did the Mishnah tell me about? What, what did we, are we wasting our time here? The Hachi Komar says the Gemara, this is the spitz here of the Chiddush. Here's the point of the Chiddush. Mi nishba tchila, chronology and order. That's the smart thing here. When ba This is a guide to the Dayan. Who should be the one nishba first? Who should be the one nishba first? Ah, malve nishba tchila. First of all, the malve should be the one nishba first and say what? and say, I'm Nishba, I hereby Nishba, that it's not in my hands. And we don't think anything will happen later, not Ganovim and no stories, and we're not concerned you'll find it later. He's the one, like Ravuna, who has to take Shavua first, that it's not in his possession. Why? Shema Yishova Zeh, because if the one Nishba first will first be who? The Loive, and he'll Nishba come as a Shava, that it's worth three and not two, and the mother wasn't yet Nishba, the mother doesn't look like a liar. He'll still pull it up because it wasn't yet nishba that it's not in his possession. So he'll still say, no, here, it's in my pocket. He'll take out the picodon. Let's repeat the beautiful answer of Ravashi so everyone gets it better. In other words, it's all about order, law and order. Everyone agrees that really, if the Malva swore, like Ravuna, the Malva swore, no, it's not in my possession. I swear, Besefer, Toira, and Khanami. We're not concerned anything will happen. But the question is order. If we say that the loive will be nishba first, the loive takes a shvua and he says, yeah, yeah, it was worth three and not two. And the malve didn't yet, yet take the shvua. The malve is using that time, that window in time and say, hey, I didn't yet swear it's not by me. Ha, it is by me. Ha, 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 ha. And it's worth two and not three. That's why we say change the order and say like this. Everyone makes their shvuas. The question is the chronology and the order. First, the Malvi should diminish by Eina Bershuti. No concern anymore. He'll pull any funny items in Beis Din. Once he did that, then the Loive can feel free and confident to take the Shvua that is worth three or not two. Very good. No egg on his face because we already prepared the ground by making the Malvi niche, but first it's not in his possession. That's all. That's the last answer. And that's it. Now comes the Gemara with another, yeah, it's actually a decent time for a short round of questions. Yeah, it's a bit of a, a, a mouthful here. Yeah, I'm listening to you. <clears throat> okay. Oh, Ravuna. Oh, Ravuna about Tachlifa Mishmedove. Ravuna, the son of Tachlifa, quoting Rav Omar, he said as follows. Reisha de Seifa. What's Reisha de Seifa, Rabbi Isai? 
Reisha the Seifa. The Seifa is B, and the first part of B, if I'm not mistaken, is B1. What's the story in B1, anybody? B1 is the, yeah, the lender claiming that you really owe me how much? It was eight, right? You still owe me four, right? And he says, no, I owe you zero. I lent you four, I got four, go home. So basically now Mr. Malve, who is now being blamed, being accused, says, bow, ciao, bambino, and I'm going home without any shua. So far, so good. However, that's a tuftal Ravuna. Wow, poor Ravuna. There's another attack on Ravuna. From that case, we claim that what? Ravuna may be wrong about saying, what did Ravuna say? That everybody has to be niche, but any person under any situation with a shoimer who accepts himself by paying, who really has to pay, still has to be niche, but the item is not somewhere in his backyard and he's not planning a trip to Hawaii with that uh, money. Yeah? And what did we say again? We're quoting again the B1, the ratio of the Seifa. Selel Visoni Olov says the borrower to the lender, you lent me four dinorim. Shtaim HaYoshove, it was worth eight dinorim. You still owe me, yeah, you were overpaid. You owe me now four back. Give me change of four. Valo Oimer, who is Halo, the lender says, he's now on the defense. No, that's not true. Kele Selel Visich Olov, Selel HaYoshove. I lent you four, I got four, 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 four. Bow, chow, 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 chow. Then he's Potter. He's Potter from eight. Why is he Potter? Because the person who's coil for coil, the person who completely denies everything that's claimed against him, does not have to take a shvua. You have to prove that you have issues here. I don't have any issues. I don't admit to the whole story. Break the Gemara. Now, before we continue, before we continue, small introduction. There's a concept in Halacha, which we're going to see now. It's in Kiddushin, and we learn it from the story of the Sota, the woman who's suspected to be, um, how do you say, not obedient to her husband, uh, disloyal, you would say, to her husband. Unfaithful is a much better word. Unfaithful to her husband. So we know that the Kohen is Mashbia her. The Kohen makes her take Shvua. Yeah, in Besamek, there's the whole story, the whole uh, scenario. He makes her take, what, what kind of Shvua does he make her uh, take? Swear that she did not have relations with a guy. Her husband suspects her because our Adim, the witnesses that she closed herself in the room with someone. And that Mr. Someone, that particular neighbor, yeah, the good looking one. Yeah, he is the one that he's concerned about, and he is the one that he told his wife, "Don't, you no, know, don't close yourself with him." So she takes the shvua. I was not mezane. I did not have anything serious going on between me and this guy. Wait a second, boom! What happens if the husband suspected her? She is a bit of a you know mischievous person, and let's say he suspected her from five other guys. Let's say he suspected her even before they were properly married at Erusim. Up until now, he couldn't really make her uh, uh, take a shvua. Why? Because the other five guys, she never closed herself in the room with. You don't just take any woman you suspect to base a makers for nothing. Yeah, the suspicion has to be very, very high. That was kinui, hasra, the whole process. Let's say the guy, the husband has other issues from previous people. Up, and listen carefully now. Those other five potential, uh, whatever, romances she had with other people, <laughs> She, he did not have the legal rights to make to, to force a shvua. Now, Mr. Number Six, yeah, the, the new guy, on him, he can pin her, he can make her take a shvua because she's been through the process in Beis Mikdash. Now we apply something called Gilgul Shvua. What's the Galgel? To roll over. If a person is Chayv one shvua and based in, and I have other legal issues with him that I could not make him take shvua. Once I do him in for one, I'm doing it for all the other shvuas as well. The same thing applies to any shvua in the world. Let's and by the way, lahavdil. I don't like to compare aloha to goy shalom. Actually, there was a time I used to read about you know American law. If that's the same uh, aloha by I know in Canada and America. Yeah, let's say there's a guy suspected of the police, but they don't have real grounds to to nail him to frame him. So they look. So they they, they drive after him. You know, once he over speeds, you know, once there's something that it can catch him. Once it's a police station, oh yeah, yeah, they start, you know, other allegations and other stories, interrogations. deal, that's more or less this in the very, very large Belabatisha picture. Once you are high of Shvua on each one and you are, other halachic issues I, I may have, I have every right in the world to now make you take Shvua on those other things as well. Now you can begin to understand why Ravuna is not so friendly with our Mishnah. Why? What did Ravuna say? Every person. And it has to take shvua, regardless to your color of your eyes or anything else you say. 
the mere fact you're a shomer and you so nicely pay me too quickly and nicely, I say, excuse me, take a shvur that the item is not by you. Ah, and yet in case B1, we say the Mr. Lender who holds the item in his hands does not have to take shvur because he denies everything. What about Gilgul? Look at the Gemara. The Gemara asks it much better than me. The im is a letter of Huna. If Ravuna is right, that automatically every person who looks after a, a Bikodon or any Shomer Socher, any Shomer at all, has to take Shvua that it's not in his domain. Migoy, Migoy here means since, not like the regular Migoy. Migoy, the Mishtab, Malve, since the Malve, anyhow has to take Shvua, Shane Bil so he writes, every Malve has to take Shvua that it's not in his possession because he had not every Malve. Every person that holds someone else's money and you know, he has to take shvua that it's not in his possession. If so, Lishtabanami, a Gilgul Shvua, Kamaho Because of Gilgul, let one shvua sort of cause this chain reaction. This Gilgul let roll over the Gal Gel. Another Shvua on even how much it's worth, which is the real Shvua which we want, right? We're arguing about was it four dinar or one dinar? That's heck a lot of a lot of money. So now you yes, take a shvua. Although you cover a call and you potter mishbuah here, this, that's an excellent case. I would love to take to make you take shbuah over your complete denial, and you say it's worth zero, and I say you still owe me four. I can't. Why? Because you cover a call. Why can't I? Since you any on Ishba right now in based in over not having it in your possession, Ravuna style, Emela, why can't I also roll over, bring over in chain reaction another shbuah of what? Of how much it's worth. No question on Ravuna. Omar Ravashi. Oh, good question. Ravashi has an answer. Omar Ravashi. Enchram, it's true. First of all, I'd like to say in many cases, yes, he would be Nishba by Gilgul. So Ravashi, Amrisa le Shmaitse Kameda of Kana. I told this Sugya to Rav Kana, the Omar Lee, Rav Kana told me, Tehe be ma'aminoi. Wow, interesting. We assume right now that the person, which person? The loive believes the malve that it's not in his possession. Get that? There are two issues here. Issue number one, how much it's worth. They're fighting like crazy over how much the collateral is worth. And therefore, is there still, you know, outstanding amount, right? But the fact that the item is not in the hands of the malve, that the loive believes. And therefore, it didn't take the shvua. It's a technical issue, like I always tell you. He actually believes him. The loyve believes the malve that the item is not in his possession. Is not straight out lying and saying it's not by me. If he says it's not by you, that I believe you. Obviously, the question is, <laughs> do they believe or don't they believe? Frag the Gemara. Frag the Gemara. Yeah. The name the loyve the malve. If so, such a lavi davi. Huh? He believes him. He thinks he's a nice, straight, honest guy. Okay. The name the loyve the malve nami. So let the loyve believe the malve also right? I think the question is here. Let him also believe him in that regarding the worth, right? If he believes him, then it's not in his house and therefore there's no shvua and therefore there's no gilgul shvua because there is no shvua of it's not in my possession. In other words, there is I, a true ravuna is right that I can force the other guy where that it's not in your house. But if I believe it's not in your house, you don't have to. But if he believes him that it's not in his house of the malve, why is this so untrustworthy? What is so not trusting re regarding what? Regarding the value. Answers the Gemara, it's not the same. Says no. Kamaho Yoshove Lokim Lebegave makes a lot of sense. He says like this Regarding the value, mister, I really, really don't think you're a liar. Nobody's screaming. Let, 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 you know, let's lower the profile, be nice and calm and civil. And the profile is very, very normal and very, uh, very credible, the story of the Gemara here. Here's the story of Mr. Loive who says, listen, I think you're an honest guy. And of course, you're not lying through your teeth saying that it's not in your house and really you're hiding it in your back door. You've been mechavrus all your life, I know you. However, with all due respect, loikim lay, you don't know the value. You don't know the value of my item. Who's the owner of the item? The Loive or the Malve? The Loive, the borrower. I know how much it's worth. You're just making a sad, stupid mistake. That's why. You're just not keenly. You don't know how much it's worth. That's all. That's why I stand over my two feet and I say, no. You say it was worth really four dinar. No, it was worth eight dinar. I, being the owner, I know how much it's worth. You're just making a mistake. 
So regarding the fact that it's not in your house, I believe you. So you don't take the Ravuna Shavua. I could have made you the Ravuna Shavua. I don't. I choose not to use that tool because I believe you. Why making me take a Shavua? I want to stay in good terms with you. But when it comes to what? To the value? I don't believe you because you just don't know. You don't know how much it's worth. You're fantasizing that it's worth four. Well, really it's worth eight. And therefore, I'd like you to make take a Shavua. But I can't take you. I cannot make you take a Shavua because you deny everything. Therefore, in B1, the lawyer has to go home. Now, nah, Fred Digmara, okay. But if so... If he said that the one who knows better is who is the lawyer, and there are more or less friendly people, they're, they're trusting each other. If so, right? Huh? If so, why can't the Malve believe the lawyer that he knows how much it's worth? Why is the Malve in the story standing on his two feet, digging his feet in the ground, and saying, no, that, yeah, <laughs> that. I know that it's worth only four and it's not eight. Don't you believe the lawyer that he knows how much his candlesticks are worth? Or don't, don't you believe that? Says the Gemara, Lo Manley. No, he doesn't trust him at all. Very interesting. The Malve thinks the lawyer is a liar. And the lawyer thinks the Malve is a trustworthy guy who's just making a mistake. Frag the Gemara, Umaishno. Why is that? Umaishno loive de Memanle le Malve. Why is it that the lawyer believes the Malve? And why is it the Malve does not believe the Loive? Why is this very unmutual, one side track, such a unilateral kind of relationship? Yeah, again, let's repeat before we finish. Let's repeat. Again, the story is as follows. The Loive claims against the Malve, the Mashkin was worth eight, not four. You, you were overpaid four. And says, and I know you're a nice guy. That's why I'm not going to ask you to take a Shavuah of what? A shvua that it's not in your house. I believe you're not lying, mamish lying. It's not in my house. And really, you're laughing inside, and your wife and children are in the back room laughing and enjoying the, the candlesticks. No, I don't think that. I, I believe you're a good guy. Why am I shouting at you regarding the value of eight, saying you still owe four? You just don't know the value. <laughs> it's my candlesticks, with all due respect. I know. I've been to the assessor a month ago. I know how much they are. The, the lawyer, on, the mother, on the other hand, is arguing, of course the Malve doesn't think that the Loive doesn't know how much his own candlesticks are worth. Elamai, the Malve thinks that he's lying. If you're not mistaken, if you're not saying the truth, you're not mistaken, and you're not mistaken, if you know the value, there's only one option, you're lying. Why is it track the Gemara that the Malve thinks that the Loive is lying and not the other way? Answers the Gemara, a very interesting Muster Dike idea. Loive, the Loive mekayim bebe Malve tumas yeshorim tanchen. The loive assumes that the malve follows, not follows, is under the definition of the posuk, tumas yeshorim tanchem, the rightfulness, the, 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 the good behavior, the honesty of the yeshorim will lead them in the right path, which means Hashem gives money to those that are honest. Somebody who's honest, Hashem blesses him with a lot of money. And the malve has more money than the loive. And malve mekayim be loive, the malve, on the other hand, Defines Mr. Loive, the borrower, as what? The self boigdim yashdem, the self, the distortion of the boigdim, of the traitors, will yashdem, will, how they say it in school is, will throw them away, right? Will, um, I think it means, will, like, what? Will? Will plunder them. Ah, like a plunder. Okay. The kids are good. In other words, we assume that the Malve thinks that the Loive is not such an honest guy. And that's why he had to fall into debt into such stories. But Shainkin, the Loive assumes the Malve is a good guy, and therefore he's not going to take the Shvu of Ravuna that, assuming it's Mamish Mamish lying that it's not in his house, not that bad. And Elamai, they only argue about the numbers as assuming that the Malve is making a mistake because at the end of the day, it's not his. Wow, we did it, guys. Continue one more line. We're done with that Sugya. Questions? Vita. Ahu Gavra, you can ask me questions by mail, by phone, also today, no problem. Ahu Gavra, one more story on the same direction. Ahu Gavra, the Afkid Kepe Gabe Chavre. A person once, he um, he deposited Kepe, Kepe are Nezomim. Oh, this week's Parsha, Rebecca, she got Nezomim. These are earrings or nose rings, some kind of rings that a person, yeah, he got the, the, the he deposited some rings by his friend Omer Lay. At some point, the depositor told the Shomer, 
it's time. Can you please give me my rings back? Amale, he told him, oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know where they are. In other words, it's not that they got lost, they're out of my house. They may be somewhere in the house, but I have no idea where they are. Ever happened to you? Also, like a maidor of Nachman, never happened to your teenagers, right? Also, like a maidor of Nachman, they came to Rav Nachman, the dying. Omer Lay says Rav Nachman to the said Shomer, Chol lo yodana, in inverted commas, Shu Sahi. Whenever you say, I don't know where that is, that's Pshia Zil Shlim. You have to go and pay. In other words, the mere fact you don't know where they are. Although you say, I know there's somewhere in the house, you know, the guy is like a 20 rooms house and like five machsanim, you know, as long as you say, I don't know, that's Pshia. You're supposed to know where the item is. You're supposed to look after it and know the location. If you dislocated it, or I would say mislocated it, it's not a dislocated bone, I know. It's not a bone. If you mislocated the item, <laughs> then pay. Hey, that's not good shmira. You're Pasha. So even if you're a machina, you're Pasha. Lo Shlim, he didn't pay. Guys, he did not pay. Chutzpan. He did not obey Rav Nachman, and he did not pay. Also, Rav Nachman agbe la and Rav Nachman went and collected his house from him. In other words, because he couldn't pay, he didn't pay back the the the. He had no cash, I guess. He didn't pay the very expensive uh, 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 jewelry. He paid. He sort of used his house and paid with his house. At the end, he did find <laughs> the, the rings, but you know what happened, Anlin? What you said before, the acre. Now they became more expensive. Da, 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 da. We continue. We'll restart from Nachman's story in the middle of a real, real, real suspense story. You cannot go to sleep at night. That's it. Biting your nails all the way from now to tomorrow. Yeah, a cliffhanger. And we're going to see this the end of the story tomorrow. Thank you very much. Have a good week and a good choydish at the end of the week.